Hey everybody, this is Theo Hartzell. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between faith and hope. Some people don't realize how much you actually need hope because they think, well, I've got faith and faith is given to every man and every man has a measure of faith. So why do I need hope and what is the importance of hope? If your faith is low, it might be because your hope is low. A lot of people are trying to come to God in faith and they're trying to pull the miracle out of faith and they're trying to do all this stuff and call fire down from heaven and tell the mountain, be thou removed and be thou plucked up and be thou cast into the sea and they're trying to muster up all of this energy and summon in the miracle by faith and all the while the reservoirs or the wells of hope have slowly diminished or almost died inside of their life I'm going to give you an important key to getting breakthrough into your life and that is to understand that faith is operating out of and pulling on the wells of hope if you're struggling in your faith today if you're not seeing the signs and wonders and miracles and understanding of God that you want to see right now it might not be a faith issue it might be a hope issue I'm going to explain stick with me and I'll be right back Hello everybody and welcome back. I want to talk to you about the difference between faith and hope for just a moment. Perhaps you've heard the saying where someone may say, don't get your hopes up on it. In other words, don't sit around and wait on it because the answer is probably not coming. And there's no use to get your hopes up because if you get your hopes up, then when it doesn't happen or it doesn't manifest, then you're going to have your heart broken. The Bible says that hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Now, one of the first things that I want to say right off the bat when I'm talking about hope is there is a difference between humanistic hope and biblical hope. Biblical hope is sitting there being based in the foundation of God and who God is and the nature and the character of God, while secular hope, on the other hand, or humanistic hope is like, well, we tried everything else. Why don't we just try this one last option because nothing else works, so we'll try this and see if it works. There's a huge difference between biblical hope that is based in God and who he is and worldly hope or humanistic hope that says, well, let's just try things till something works out. And if it doesn't work out, then at least we tried. I love what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It says, and now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The Greek word there for abideth means to dwell or to remain. Now, you might just pass over this and think there's nothing to this, but what I want you to understand is Paul is saying, look, and he's just finished talking about love and what love is. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. And he's tried to come through all this, and now he's saying, look, I'm telling you that love still abides, and I'm telling you that faith still abides and still lives and is still here, but I also want you to understand the third element, and that is hope. And so I want to dig in and get into this and understand, well, if hope is very important and that's one of the three pillars of this thing, then let's explain and understand what hope is. Now, I want to give you a simple illustration to help you understand this. And one way that I'm going to draw this comparison or paint this picture is I want you to picture going to an old-timey water well where you come to the water well, you drop the bucket down by the rope, and it goes down and you pick the water up, and then you pull the rope up and up comes the bucket of water. Now, the comparison that I want to make in this is I want you to picture that bucket of being faith and that water well that you're lowering it down into is the well of hope. When you come to God for a miracle or when you come to God and you want an answer, when you come to God and you want something, you are lowering your faith bucket into the well of hope and you're drawing on that. And that's going to be a comparison or analogy that I use throughout this story. So people are running around and they're trying to get miracles from God and they're trying to get answers and they're trying to get blessings and they're trying to get all this stuff from God. And the problem is when they're lowering their faith bucket down to get something out of this well of hope, there's nothing to draw on and when they try to pull on it they don't understand man I've prayed I fasted I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do and yet there's no answer and I don't understand why there's no Yeah, I don't understand why there's no answer and the problem is is because their hope is low they don't have a joyful expectation that they're about to get an answer I want to look at the word hope and see what it means the word study dictionary description of the word hope means a desire of some good with an expectation expectation of obtaining it. 
The Thayer Dictionary defines hope as a joyful and confident expectation. In other words, what they're trying to say is hope is the joyful expectation that something is going to happen, my situation is going to change, I'm about to receive breakthrough, I'm about to receive a miracle. And that's why I'm saying when it looks like your faith is low or you're struggling in your faith and you don't know why you can't get your answer, it might not have anything to do with your faith at all. It might be a hope issue because when you're coming and you're trying to activate your faith and you're trying to tap into the supernatural realm and you're trying to make something happen, nothing is happening because you don't have a joyful expectation, which is hope. You don't have a joyful expectation that the answer is actually fixing the manifest. And so you're trying to make yourself believe and you're trying to, oh, if I can just believe hard enough, I know I'm going to make this thing happen. And all the while, you don't really in the deep part of you have a joyful expectation that the answer is actually going to come. And therefore the answer is not coming and you're like, I don't know what's wrong with my faith. Nothing's wrong with your faith. There's a hope issue. Do I need to have hope? Yes, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In other words, what was he saying? He's trying to say, look, everybody might be wondering, why are you always happy? Man, there's always a smile on your face. Everybody can be in the middle of a chaotic situation, pulling their hair out, beating their head into the wall and going crazy. And you seem to have perfect peace in the middle of a storm. You've got a smile on your face. There's a light in your eye. Nothing's bugging you. Nothing's bothering you. What's going on? Why do you seem to be so happy? Why is there a hope inside of you? And he was trying to say, look, you're going to be able to stick out in the middle of a chaotic situation. Why? Because inside of you, you have hope. He wasn't talking about bragging about of the faith. He was saying there's a hope that resides in you. And therefore, when people begin to ask you, why are you so happy all the time? Then give them a reason for the hope. And that is because you have hope in God. Biblical hope is not a desire that you're going to sit there and roll the dice and your magic number comes up and you're just going to keep trying things and exhausting all options and hoping that something will eventually work out. Biblical hope is the foundation of everything that our Christian life and walk is based on. I'm going to get into this in a minute, but we have a hope that lies within us and it is the foundation of our Christian walk and faith operates out of the hope that is inside of us. Some people might feel like hope is the enemy of faith and faith in them are contradictory one to the other. And it's like, well, I don't really want to talk about hope because that sounds like futuristic out there. Well, I hope this works out and therefore people don't have hope or don't want to have hope and they think I got to have faith. The Bible says now faith. Well, wait a second. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, because if you look at it, it says, Now faith is the substance of things. Listen to this. Hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Did you catch that? It said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. When he was writing Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, he was making a direct correlation and saying these things are not mutually exclusive to one another. They're not fighting one another. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And this is what I'm talking about. Hope is the seed or the well that faith is reaching down into, reaching into, grabbing a hold out of, and pulling the miracle out of it. You have to have hope. Hope is what is making the faith get the supernatural miracle and pull it into your world. When you're struggling to receive an answer, when you're struggling to receive a promise, when you're struggling, it might not have anything to do with faith at all. You might have faith to move mountains and curse fig trees and make them die. But your problem might be you don't have a You don't have a joyful expectation that God is about to actually do a miracle. The joyful expectation of hope is you have a hope in your heart. The situation's about to change. I feel a quickening and a moving and God is about to do a miracle and then inside of that hope faith comes alive and it's quickened and then you grab the miracle out of the supernatural realm and you pull it into your realm and you might be thinking wow I hate I had great faith in this moment and the truth is it might not have been faith at all it might have been the joyful expectation of hope that allowed faith to come alongside of the hope and pull it into this world I'm not here to knock faith I love faith I preach faith all the time I preach about faith I believe in faith I'm a faith preacher when we go to Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11 and we're looking at those things faith 
pleases God in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I mean, faith takes charge. Faith places a demand on the anointing. Faith steps out of the boat. Faith bridges the gap between two worlds. I mean, faith is a conviction. It speaks to the mountain and says, Be thou plucked up and be thou thrown to the sea. Faith commands the fig tree, I curse you. Be shriveled up and die. And faith is also a lifestyle. And when I look at the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11, it begins to talk about these great men and women of faith. And just to give you a few examples, it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. By faith Abraham when he was called to go into a place. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob. By faith Joseph gave commands concerning his body. By faith Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. You know I am not going to condemn faith. I love faith. I preach faith. I believe in faith. I want to talk about faith all day long. But the purpose of this video is to try to tell you that faith is made strong in hope, a joyful expectation that God is about to move in this situation. And I want you to understand that if you can get your hope in God, if you can make your hope rise up, then you are going to see a breakthrough of signs, wonders, and miracles. And God is going to begin to move like you haven't seen him move in a long time because you've got to quicken hope. In fact, let me look at a few scriptures for a moment because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 42, verse 5, and David is talking and he says, Why art thou cast down? Down, oh my soul and he's speaking to his soul his mind will intellect and emotions and he says why are you disquieted within me and listen to his answer right here here's the answer of being cast down being discouraged of the mind will intellect and emotions being cast down listen to what he says hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance he goes on a few verses later and again he reiterates why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. And not only that, but he comes back to hit it again a chapter later in 43 and 5. And he says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You might ask yourself, what is he doing? Why does he keep saying that? Because he wanted you to understand whenever you're rocking and reeling and your faith has been knocked back and you're back against the ropes and feel like you're about to be knocked out, then your answer is to rekindle your hope. Get a hold of your faith, but get a hold of your hope in the process. Hope is the joyful expectation that when I walk into this situation, when I pray this next prayer, when I take this anointed prayer cloth and put it on my body, when I send this text message, when I make this phone call, I'm expecting that something is about to happen. That joyful expectation is not faith. That joyful expectation is hope. And if you're not seeing signs and wonders and miracles and the answers that you want to see right now, it's not a faith problem. You got a faith. Everybody's given a measure of faith. But I I'm telling you, the problem is the joyful expectation of hope. It's the joyful expectation that God is about to step into this and He's going to quicken this word. He's going to quicken this text message. He's going to quicken the anointing in this prayer cloth, in this, heart, this handkerchief or whatever it is. And there's about to be a manifestation of the power of God. And I'm telling you that that is hope. Hope is the joyful expectation that the situation is going to change. And therefore, because there is an expectation that something is going to change, change. Then faith makes four men grab up a lame man and put him on a stretcher, climb up on the rooftop, rip the roof off of the house, lower him down and put him in Jesus' lap and say, hoop, there he is. And Jesus would heal the man. Hope is the joyful expectation of getting healed. And then because of the hope or the well of hope springing up and believing that there is a chance for a miracle to manifest, then faith compels blind Bartimaeus to stand up and begin to start screaming, son of David, have mercy upon me. And then when all the people are standing around him and telling him, hush, you're disturbing the master. 
faith begins to compel him. But the root of it is the hope that he is expecting that something is about to change. And faith is the seed or the root taking action. And I'm going to begin to scream louder. And when Jesus stops, and thank God he stopped because he's never going to come through Jericho again. He's about to go to the cross and he's going to die. He's never going to come back through Jericho. But hope was saying something can change in this moment because Jesus Christ is walking by. I'm believing that my situation can change. And because of the hope that the situation can change, faith compelled him to stand and to scream. And Jesus stopped and faith pulled in that miracle because he had a hope that the situation could change. Hope was believing that the situation could change in Zacchaeus' life and he hoped to see Jesus and he didn't know how he was going to do it. The Bible says that Zacchaeus was a short little man but he had hope of seeing the Savior and because he had hope he wanted to find him but he was short and he couldn't see over the multitude and the crowds they were too tall and so what he did hope compelled him to run ahead of the crowd. He was able to climb a tree and faith compelled him and lo and behold Jesus came along in that moment and he said Zacchaeus I need to eat and dine with you tonight. Come down out of that tree. I'm telling you it was hope. I'm hoping to see him tonight. I want to go there. I want to talk to him. I'm hoping maybe I can see him from afar off. I'm telling you, if you want to get a sign, a wonder, a miracle, a if you want to get a blessing in your life, I'm telling you, you need to let the well of hope spring up and let faith reach down and grab a hold of your hope. And you're going to be able to find the answers that you haven't been able to find in a while. I know I'm wound up right now, but I'm excited about this. I got to tell you, your issue is not with faith. It's not with your measure of faith. The problem that you're having right now is that you don't have a joyful expectation that this next prayer you pray is going to be the one that brings breakthrough. You don't have joyful expectation that that next text you receive from a man of God is actually going to bring breakthrough. You don't have a joyful expectation that when you go to bed tonight, you're going to have a dream from God and it's going to give you divine shanda. It's going to give you divine inspiration and answer from God. I'm telling you, I know I'm wound up, but please, church, hear me. Family, friends, loved ones, hear me. Maybe I can explain it this way, but hope is getting up in the morning and you expect something to change in your day. It's expecting yourself to go to the mailbox and you're going to open it up and you're not going to expect to see bills, but you're going to expect to see breakthrough. Hope is walking down the road and you're looking and listening for birds to sing and you're looking for good things to happen. You're looking for money to be on the ground. Hope is the joyful expectation that when you go to work, there's going to be good things to greet you and not bad things. Hope is walking around and looking, God, where are you at in this moment? God, where are you at in this situation? I know what the obstacles say and I know what the situation says, but what does hope say about this? And hope right in the middle of a terrible situation of having somebody in your life that's broken, hurt, lame, somebody that needs a miracle, that's got sickness and you need an answer right now. And hope is looking around saying, what can I do in the middle of this moment? I'm expecting God to move. Where are the waters stirred? What's going on? What can I do? Is there a prayer cloth that I can get a hold of? I'm expecting God to move right now. What can I do? And because you have a hope that you can do something for God, then faith is quickened and you begin to move and you tap into that well of hope and you call the miracle and the anointing in because you have an answer because of the hope that lies within you. You believe that God can work. And because of that belief in God to work, you get room for Him to step into your life through faith. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. I've used this story before, but I like to talk about this. And the story is about this noted man who was Kurt Richter, who was a notable biologist and geneticist at the John Hopkins Medical School. And in the 1950s, he was doing all of these studies on rats to try to see how hope affected them or if they had hope or if it made any change in their lives. And so he took all of these rats and he put them in a vat of water to see how long they could swim. And they swam around in the water for about seven minutes and then they began to die and the first group began to die about seven or eight minutes and he did the same thing with a second group of rats and he put them in the water and he let them swim around to see how long they could swim they swam for about seven to eight minutes before they began to drown and they all died he took a third group of rats and he put them in the same water in the same exact vat they were the exact same breed of rats my understanding and he puts them in the exact same body of water and he lets them swim as this group began to drown at the seven or eight minute mark just like the first group did and just like the second group did instead of letting the rats drown he took the rats out one by one and saved them alive and then he nourished them back to the health and then he fed them and watered them and gave them everything they need let them rebuild and recoup their strength and then he takes this group of rats that had been saved and he put them 
back into a vat of water to do the exact same thing again. And when he got to the seven or eight minute mark and he started expecting to see them drowning, something miraculous was taking place. Instead of the rats beginning to drown, they kept swimming and they kept swimming and they kept swimming and 10 minutes passed and 15 minutes passed and 30 minutes passed and one hour passed and two hours passed and four hours and five hours and 10 hours and 15 hours passed. And according to the report, the rats are still swimming. Why? They're still swimming because they have hope. They were in the situation before and they were rescued. And according to the reports, those rats, that third group that had been rescued previously, ended up swimming 17 hours before they finally gave up hope and succumbed and died. Now I did a little math on that and I took the 17 hours and I divided it by 60 minutes and I came up with 1,020 minutes of how long these rats actually swam. And then I took that and I divided that into the eight minute segment that they had all died at before. And I was shocked to see that that was 130 times what they were previously able to do. And what shocked me and marveled me is the only thing that made the difference between group one and group two and then group three being rescued was the fact that the third group had been rescued and taken out of the water and therefore they had a hope while they were swimming they went past the three hour mark they went past the four hour mark the five hour mark the 10 hour mark they were exceeding all expectations they were doing what did not even seem possible according to what had been previously studied and these rats swam for 17 hours and the one thing that compelled them to do it was hope because they had been saved before and they were hoping that they would be saved again. What am I trying to tell you? What I'm trying to tell you is there is a reason of hope that will compel you and drive you when it seems like your faith is being crashed and dashed against the rocks and you don't have an answer and you don't know where God's at and you've been praying and you've been fasting and there's been no answer. I'm telling you when faith can't sustain you and love is not around and nobody else is around and there's no friends and there's no family and there's nobody around you to pick you up, I'm telling you the one thing that will compel you to keep on walking, to keep on moving is hope. And you have a hope in God. And when all the obstacles seem like they're about to kill you and every situation's turned upside down in your life and you don't know how you're going to make it through, I'm telling you the one thing that you need to hold on to in your situation is you need to hold on to the joyful expectation. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, but one thing that I do know is I know the name of Jesus and I know that I can hold to the nail scarred hands and I know that he delivered me before and I know that he will deliver me again. Can I give you the story like this? When David was speaking he was saying why art thou cast down oh my soul? Can I take you to a story in the Bible where he has gone to Ziklag, he's lost everything he's lost his family, he's lost his home, he's lost his children, his brothers rejected him, his family rejected him, the people at Ziklag are lost. His friends are wanting to kill him. Everybody's wanting to stone him. The Philistines have rejected him. Saul's rejected him. The people of his own nation have rejected him. But the Bible says that he encouraged himself. Do you know what David did in that moment? He began to recount and recall every place that his back had been against the wall, but God had came through for him. And he began to remember, here was where God delivered me. Here is where God came through for me. There was a bear in my way and I killed the bear. There was a giant in my way and I killed the giant. There was a lion that came to take away my little sheep and I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I killed the giant. And he began to round. I remember God. Yes, God was there for me. I didn't didn't know how I was going to make it out, but he came through. I got that giant's head and I kept his sword. I got the lamb out of the lion's mouth. I took the lamb out of the bear's mouth. God was with me then and God is with me now. Do you want me to pursue God? Yes, you want me to pursue. I have a joyful expectation that I'm going to get up in this moment of hurt, heartbreak, and everybody's wanting to kill me. And I am about to go on and I'm going to get my family back. I'm going to get my loved ones back. I'm going to get everything back and because he had a hope in the middle of a chaotic situation faith compels him to receive the word from the Lord strap on his sword tell everybody mount up we're about to go get our family back and they did go get their family back because he had a hope and because he had hope 
Faith compelled him to take action on the word of the Lord, and he went and got his family back, his children back, and everything back plus more. My friends, I want to tell you the scripture says it like this in Psalms 126 verses 5 through 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Can I tell you the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt that it is written, for he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Psalms 30 verses 5 says it like this, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I want you to know and understand, I'm about done with this, but I want you to understand if you're struggling to see where your miracle's coming from, if you're struggling wondering where is my promise at, if you're struggling saying, God, I've been fasting, I've been praying, I've been looking for breakthrough, I've been looking for you to move in my situation, I've been looking for an answer, I've been praying, I got sticky notes and post-it notes all over the place, and I've been looking for you to come through, and I've been wondering where you're at. I want you to know and understand that what you need to get right now is not your measure of faith. You don't need to get a hold of your faith. You need to get a hold of your hope. And you need to say, I have an expectation when I go into this prayer closet that I am going to touch the hem of the garment. I'm telling you, hope would make her have the desire to even function, to make up her mind to go press through the crowd and to get up there and say, if I can but touch the hem of the garment, I'm telling you that was hope that if she could get to Jesus, she would get a miracle and because she had hope faith compelled her to go in and push people out of the way get on her hands and knees and bite kneecaps and push people out of the way if she had to and muster up through there and squeezed her way up in there and grabbed the hem of the garment and because she had hope and faith enacted behind it she got a miracle and virtue went out of Jesus and he stopped the crowd and stopped everybody and he said wait a second who touched me and everybody's like what do you mean who touched you there's a throng around you grabbing you. And he said, no, wait a minute, something happened. I felt virtue go out of me. I'm telling you what came out of him was virtue because she had hope. Oh, there's this man named Jesus I've heard stories about. I've heard rumors. I've heard reports. I've seen people that were healed and testified and I saw the look in their eye. And somewhere inside of her, hope was quickened on the inside of her. And faith compelled her, if I can but touch the hem of the garment, I know that I can be healed and faith compelled her I don't know how I'm going to do it but I am going to push through this crowd get out of my way I may be a little woman that's infirmed and sick right now but she mustered up her strength and knew if I can get to Jesus I know I can get my miracle if you want to know where your answer right now it's on the other side of hope and it's waiting for you to quicken a joyful expectation inside of you that says I'm going to get a a hold of this prayer right now and I'm going to say right now I believe with all of my heart that God can step into the middle of this situation he can step into the middle of this prayer right now he can step into the middle of this Bible verse he can step in the middle of what I'm doing right now and by faith I'm going to believe that God can do a word. Hey man, I'm wound up. I love y'all. Praise the Lord. But I want you to understand right now, you're not having a faith crisis or a faith issue. You're having a hope issue. You've let the depression come into your life. You've let discouragement come in your life. You've let the dark clouds loom over the horizon too long. You've let the giants sit there and torment you too long and ask you, where's your God and where's your answer and where is your miracle? I want you to believe right now today. I'm a I want you to believe right now. I want you to quicken right now can be the moment that earth is shattered and heaven is quaked by the sound of your voice as God begins to sit out on the edge of his throne and listen to your prayer because it's quickened by hope and you believe that God can move in this moment, in this prayer, in this time, in this season. Another story that comes to my mind is the Bible story about the man that was sitting at Gate Beautiful. And the Bible says that Peter and John were walking along and they were going to temple to worship at the time of worship. And the Bible says that there was a lame man. He had been there for a long time. Peter and them said, hey, look on me. 
But here's what's beautiful is the Bible says that he looked up expecting to receive something from him. Can I tell you what he was looking up for was not in faith, but he was looking up for in hope. I want to leave you with a word today, my friends. I want to tell you. If you want to know where your answer is, if you want to know where your promise is, your promise is on the other side of your hope. And right now, I want you to begin to say, I am going to allow my heart to believe again. I am going to allow my faith to get a hold of what has been rooted and grounded in me in hope. I am going to allow myself to believe that God is going to hear, that Jesus is going to step into this situation. I want to pray over you right now. In the name of Abahone Lele Bile Amalabo Sandalabakanda La Bahaya. In the name of Jesus God. I got such a burden upon me for the hope that lies within us, for the answer that we need to give for people, for the answers that we're looking for. God, let hope rise up. Let hope rise up. I know that faith the Oma Bahandi Abasete. I know that faith the Oma Basete Babahaya La Nehama La Bashanda. I know that faith I know that faith needs to quicken us to our miracle. I know that faith needs to Let me pray in tongues over you for a minute, y'all. Yo shondo rabohori animala baba soto re anda haye. Adabore amashani soto rabohokondo re haya. God, there's people that are coming to you and they're wrestling with their faith and saying, what's wrong with my my faith and there is not a problem with the faith the problem is with the hope they don't have an expectation they're not believing that right now is the moment they're not believing that right now is the moment they're not believing that right now is the initiation that this thing can happen hallelujah but I want to tell you, get a hold of your hope right now, everybody. Get a hold of your hope right now. I feel virtue being pulled out of me right now. Get a hold of it right now. Hope is the answer. Let your hope be kindled. Let your hope be stirred up. Let your hope get a hold of it right now is the moment. Right now is the answer. Right now is the season. Right now is what you know. I speak to you right now for your hope to rise up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I love you for sticking with me through this video. I love you. I appreciate you. But I want you to understand right now that you got to get a hold of hope right now. And hope says, I believe that God can move in this situation, that in this prayer cloth, in this prayer cloth, in this text message, in this phone call, when I read this verse, when I pick up this Bible and read this verse, when I pick up the phone and call the man of God, when I get a hold of my prayer warriors and we go to prayer and we begin to plead the blood of Jesus over my daughter, plead the blood of Jesus over my son, that there's going to be an answer that's ready to stir the waters. There's an answer that's ready to move in the tangible anointing of the prayer cloth. There's a tangible anointing that is about to move inside of hope because faith is lowering the draw bucket down into the wellsprings of hope and saying, I'm about to pull a miracle out of this thing. I'm about to pull an answer out of this thing. I love you. I want to pray over you right now. Father, you see every person that's listening to this, some of the sound of my voice right now, I command right now that hope would begin to stir in them again and they would begin to believe again that a miracle can manifest they would be able to believe again that hope can come stir up the hope inside of them God and let there be a miracle by faith of reasoning because they're pulling from the wellsprings of hope in the name of Jesus I love you, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. I love you. I appreciate you. If you've been enjoying this video, if you've been enjoying these videos, if you be on my city, I got to keep praying over you for a moment in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, move in hope. Move in hope, Jesus. Move in hope inside of them, God. Let hope be quickened. Let hope stir up, God. Let the miracle manifest because you're moving. You're quickening. You're operating. God, let the manifestation of your power move in hope right now. In the name of Jesus right now friends. I love you. Family, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for covering me in prayer. 
I'm so honored for you to just follow me and love me and click and subscribe on the videos and cover me in your prayers. Sometimes when you're doing these things, the attack of the enemies come against you because he wants to stop you. But I love you and I appreciate you. If you've enjoyed these videos, then I'd love to get you to subscribe. Click on the bell notification. There's going to be more videos coming. I love you and I appreciate you covering me in prayer. And I'm praying for you and I want you to pray for me. I love you. God bless you. And I'm going to see you on the next video. Until then, I love you you and I'm going to pray for you and I'm asking you to pray for me. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.